Last time on No Direction Home. Hopper and I make our way over to Aravaca, Arizona, where we do a tour of the border wall and meet up with some fellow riders for a dual sport weekend. Getting geared up, ready to go. Hopefully, Take Hopper's going to be all right. Got a puncture in the so radiator. Nice. Two money on it. So did a little so DIY fix a job. So yesterday I was leaking radiator fluid uh, after I laid my bike down, and I thought that it was just maybe a loose hose clamp. But then, uh, upon inspecting it today, changing the radiator fluid, I have a very small puncture in the. Um, tube here so we did uh try to do a uh diy fix it so i can ride the rest of the weekend until i can get it to a place where i can replace the tube um so we'll see if that works So we got a crew of about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight riders, uh, and we're headed out. I think we're actually going to do a similar route that I to what uh, Ron and I did yesterday. Well, it's fine. Uh, good riding, and uh, this is everybody else's first day, so um, I think they got a route plan for today, and I know they have a route plan for tomorrow. So also. Uh, DIY a solution to my puncture and my heater hose for my radiator and uh, just brought along some extra distilled water. We'll see how that works, how the bike holds up, how Hopper holds up. But um, yeah, let's, let's play it by ear, see how things go today. I'm all alone. So basically what happened was uh, you know, we DIY'd the uh, heater hose for the radiator. We made it to the gas station, I filled up, and then we rode about two miles down paved road to uh, get to the trailhead, and it was pretty much just like yesterday. Steam coming out, it's overheating, and so it's leaking through that puncture. So it's gonna require, I was hoping that like a little DIY fix would just get me through today so I could ride today, but it, ain't, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen, so I gotta replace the hose, so. All right, Hopper. I mean, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't my fault. Get you sorted, dude. Just hold on for like 10 more minutes. All right, so uh, I'm back at uh, Andy's place, the host, and I got my bike in his uh, his garage. And uh, everybody else obviously is out riding, so I need to uh, take a look at Hopper. Gonna take off the tank and uh, take a look at the hose. Hopefully it'll be an easy fix. Luckily, Andy, the host, has some 5 8 inch heat hose. So this should be exactly what I need to replace. So gonna get started take a look at it. Um, disappointed that I'm not out riding, but hopefully this will be a quick fix and we can get uh, Hopper back on the road. So going to get into it. All right. So I got my seat off, got my tank off. Now I can get to the piece of hose that has the puncture. And you can see it's just a small piece right here. This is what got punctured like right here. So now I got to get that hose clamp off, which is kind of tricky because it's no room, but get that off and then I can take off the piece of hose. So I got the radiator hose off, the piece that connects the two. The problem now is actually this piece of hose is bigger than what I got. So I might have to try to force this piece of hose on there. I'm gonna give it a shot. Thank you. 
So here's the piece of hose that went bad uh, on the radiator. Um, see if you can see where, oh yeah, right there. You can see it either cracked or maybe got punctured. I don't know. Got a replacement piece of hose coming and uh, get it on the bike, get it on hopper and get ready to go. What's going on here, Andy? Woo! That bird, that bird looks done. Mesquite cook ticket. What we'll do is we'll just let it sit in there and stay warm for a little bit, and then we'll put it in the oven, bring it back up to temperature. All right. After I do the oven, after I do the. In Andy, we trust. Yeah. Oh, you'll love it. At Thanksgiving, everybody brings the turkey, and the small turkey is the first one to go. We're gonna take Andy's Jeep out. Should be fun. We got water. I got a ton of water. That was great. We found water at 40 feet. What? Yeah. But my well up here is at 300 feet. I'm gonna get from over here. I'm sorry to even know, but it's an immigrant trail. About halfway through it, there's a whole cache of food and water, and blankets, and stuff like that that are left by the people helping people. I'm glad, I'm glad at least I was able to come in the Jeep as a boat. I didn't get to ride my bike. I used to mountain bike all day. I still do, but now I have an e bike. I love that thing. They are amazing. You still get all the exercise you want, but you can do shit you can never do. Right. I'm a two-wheel drive. I have a, this right here is what's called a Detroit locker. So I can lock the front wheels in and put it in, uh, maybe I'll just do that. Well, it locks the, it locks the, um, instead of worn lockers, you know, it locks the, um, the wheels into the transmission. Oh, that's cool. Otherwise they freewheel, which is great. That's what you want. Okay, first gear. Holy shit! I forget who owns it now, but they actually had a ladder, a rope ladder going down there, man. I mean, come on. So this is country living. This is your southern home. Here. <laughs> this is your getaway, your weekend getaway. Oh, there's getaway. an avion, though. Oh, the roof's falling in since I've been here last. Mm. Looks like the road's good, though. I mean, I took, I dumped my bike off this once. It was just a trail. And what happens is when it rains, it comes down and there's these huge ditches, you know. And uh, fortunately, I had some friends with me, and we drug it back up. But god damn. What bike was it? That KLR. Oh, yeah. No, that's it was actually a different. It was a KLR, but it was a different one. And, uh, you know, you can see there's a fair amount of work done. Oh, I don't see the. Oh, there it is. See this little thing? Oh, this is what I've been in a bunch of these, and this is what the mining. This is what they look like. You know, this is going to work every day, and this is the big one. So I got between a female. Black bear and her cubs. I had a bunch of people with me. We we're going fly fishing up in this lake. And we we're in a very dense uh, under, underbrush. And so the, the game trail was the only way to go. You couldn't penetrate otherwise. And where was it? Where in Alaska were you? Southeastern, in a place called Taku Harbor. Okay. 
And uh, so um, I'm walking along, you know, and all of a sudden I come around the corner and here's this bear from about halfway up the hood there to me. What's that? Six feet? Yeah. And she's just looking at me like, not growling or anything, just looking. And then she, uh, and I'm going, oh, hello, Mrs. Bear, or Mr. Bear. And I lower my eyes and I back up slowly, never turn around and run. So I'm backing up and saying, hey, I know where there's some great garbage cans and stuff. And I'm yelling at the guys behind me, Bear, back up, get out of here. And just as I'm backing up, I see some movement out of the side of my eye. And there's two cubs, tree. I could have grabbed their asses right there. And so, you know, it's amazing. I just didn't faint. But anyway, I got out of there, and and then later on, I went to this guy's cabin, who's a you know one of these guy, old guys that lives out in the bush by himself. And I take him popcorn when I go down and see him, Kenny, and I, I give him a couple pounds of popcorn, you know. And I said, Kenny, what's with this bear? You know, I said, Jesus, she should have killed me. And he said, Well, she doesn't seem to be too concerned, you know. Those cubs came up to my cache, you know, have a food cache, and. And they took some onions and I chased them off and one of them fell down the stairs and lost her onion and started bawling. <laughs> well, when they start bawling, mom is going to be there in a minute, right? So he runs up and he grabs another onion and gives it to the <laughs> cub and then the cub runs away. Oh, I got my onion. <laughs> story number 3,681. When we get back, I'll show you some of my documented stories. Please do. So one of the guys that's staying here, Nate, was out running some errands and he picked up some hose for me, and uh, which was cool of him. And uh, I cut a piece of hose and put it on uh, for the radiator. So I'll show you what I did. There's the new radiator hose. Hopefully it holds. It's on there tighter now. So now I guess going to... Uh, Put the gas tank on and put the seat back on. I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm with uh, my buddy Tim. He just uh, he just arrived, but we have something in common, which is we both did the uh, El Camino del Diablo. Yeah, we did. And he did it in one day, which beats my record. I did it in two. He did it in one. Yeah. And how old are you, Tim? I'm 70. And what do you ride? Uh, Husky T250i. That's a beautiful bike. It's a nice bike. And he's camping. So I got a 70-year-old guy who rides a Husky. 250 and he camps you're, you're you're like my hero dude this is this is where i'm going the rest of my life i'm glad to hear it all right man. <laughs> next time on no direction home hopper and i get to enjoy one more beautiful day in the aravaca arizona desert and stop and help out some fellow riders with a little problem with their can-am